Hey guys, what's up? Excalibur here, and today we're going to be looking at the question of, is Bonesaw OP? There's a lot of talk about how Bonesaw is potentially one of the best items in the game for weapon power right now, and we need to assess exactly why that is being thought of, and what it is that makes Bonesaw that way. Now the item Bonesaw, you can see the stats up on your screen. All of those wonderful stats for weapon power doesn't seem overly powerful on the front of it, but the change in update 2.3, giving it flat 8% armor pierce, seems to be making it one of the best builds in the game. Now, this is from Nayajira Min on Twitter, and you can see in the top left-hand corner, Bonesaw appears to have one of the highest DPS out of any of the builds, more so than the Breaking Point Double Tyrant's Monocle, more so than the uh, Tornado Trigger Breaking Point Sorrow Blade build. And with using maths from Kano on Feeking, we're going to look into this. So, the four builds that I want to assess are the Sorrow Blade Breaking Point Tornado Trigger, Sorrow Blade Breaking Point Bonesaw, Sorrow Blade, Bonesaw, Tornado Trigger, and the Breaking Point, Tornado Trigger, Tyrant's Monocle. Those, according to the maths, generally seem to have the highest DPS. Now, having a look at these, this is what I'm going to refer to these particular items as throughout the rest of the video, so make sure you take note of those annotations, and then you'll understand what's going on in these tables. Now, this is a table for... Uh, DPS, and DPS stands for damage per second. Now, it might look a little bit confusing to you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the values that you need to be concerned with. At 86 armor, the critical strike builds, so the Tornado Trigger Tyrant's Monocle and the Tornado Trigger with Sorrow Blade and Breaking Point, seem to come out on top. But as we go further down the armor values, you can see that the Bone Saw builds become more and more effective, trumping that DPS of the critical strike build. Now, DPS doesn't mean so much unless you put it into context, and that context is how much time it takes to deal a certain amount of damage. Um, and obviously, you can see here, this is time to deal 2,000 damage and time to deal 3,000 damage, because DPS means a little bit, but we want to see its real-term applications. Now, this is all maths done by Fee King. A lot of these maths that I am using is based on what Canal VG did as well, so big shout-out to those guys. They've been very helpful. Let's have a look at the 2,000 da table damage to start with. So as you can see, let's have a look, uh, this is essentially showing you different armor values, how quickly it takes to kill a target. Now I did some tests, about 150 armor, critical strike in terms of tornado trigger is equivalent to bone saw when you've got a sorrow blade and breaking point to back it up. So that is about the equivalent level. 161 armor, which is literally just base armor plus coat of plates will allow Bone Sword to be better. So even at that low armor threshold, Bone Sword starts to become quicker at taking down a single target. And this is reflected in the 3000 damage chart as well, but obviously everything just takes a little bit longer to kill. Now I did some tests side by side. On the left is the Sorrow Blade Breaking Point Tornado Trigger build. On the right is Sorrow Blade Breaking Point and Bone Saw. Now the uh, armor values you can see in the top left corner of the screen. Uh, at the low armor values, Tornado Trigger tends to have the advantage. But as soon as we get to that base plus coat of plates, the 161 armor value, you'll actually see that Bone Saw start, starts to take the slight edge. And then I just added a little bit of armor on top of that to see what happened furthermore. Added a light shield, which actually gives you 10 armor by the way. A lot of you might not realize that the shielding items do give you a small amount of armor. And, and you can see that the Bone Saw starts to become more and more uh, effective at taking down a target with the higher armor that you get. Which is kind of what Bone Saw is designed to do. Um, but not even as a fourth damage item. This is a third damage item. And at the Metal Jacket, you'll see that one second gap open up between the two kills. Which is kind of what we saw from that damage table at 2000 health. So with these advantages, even at such low armor investment, why isn't everyone using Bone Saw? And that's a pretty good question, because it seems good, right? But it's still situational, it's still hard to pull off. It does rely on your opponent at least building tier 2 armor. Now in solo queue, how often do you see a weapon power carry um, build 4 damage items and just, a, and just an Aegis? That happens quite a lot. How often do you see that people delay their tier 2 armor buy for more damage items, even as a melee carry? It, it can happen, so... You know, it does rely on your opponent at least getting that armor investment to make it worth it for you, which is difficult because you rely on your opponent building something other than, than you being proactive with your build. Uh, and unlike Critical Strike, it requires you to be attacking the same target consistently. And that's especially important if you're building breaking point stacks, because if you switch targets, suddenly you're going to start to lose breaking point stacks and your, your DPS will be very severely affected. And Bone Saw only affects the target that you're hitting. Whereas Critical Strike, you can build breaking point stacks across the board and you don't have to worry about switching targets because you're always going to maintain your damage output. And also, another fact is that you can lose some of the snowball effect that Critical Strike can bring. Uh, if you're building Critical Strike and you start to take advantage of a game very early on, 
uh, you end up could end up having a whole damage item above your opponent because you've snowballed from having the critical strike early on. Uh, and it doesn't matter then if they build Bone Sword, it doesn't matter if they build a, a, a sort of a build that's supposed to be better damage output, because you could end up having an entire item above them and your DPS will just be higher regardless. So there's a lot of different reasons why Bone Sword is still difficult to make work and... You know, in practice, it can be very difficult to actually hit the same target over and over again to build bone saw stacks. You know, what I did in those experiments, it was me standing still attacking the same target over and over again. But in a team fight situation, how likely is that going to happen? Not very often. Um, so bone saw again can be difficult to make work in practice. I think as a fourth damage item, it's it's really good. Um, I think we'll have to see what happens in in professional play. I, the, obviously, the stats and the figures and the maths are there to say as a third damage item, it can surpass even critical strike with that low armor investment. So I think uh, there's definitely cause to say that is worth it as a third item, um, weapon power item. But I, I think we'll have to see if that progresses because I think still it can be difficult to make bone saw work. So that was just a short video on Bone Saw and, and how actually its DPS is high, but making it work in practice can be quite difficult. Um, I encourage you guys to go and test it and see what you enjoy. If you enjoy building Bone Saw as a third item and it works for you, I definitely think you should bring that to the table. Think on things like uh, Glaive, Blackfeather, Rona, Bone Saw actually can be super effective as a, as a big, hard hitting. Um, armor shredding item that can be very effective at dealing with carries so I, I also think as a fourth damage item on ranged carriage it is still really really good so I definitely encourage you guys to go and test for yourselves but based on this math it should be better right it should be better than tornado trigger it should be better than a lot of other builds that are put together but in practice Sometimes that isn't directly translated to how things work in a team fight. So remember that, guys. Just because the maths and the numbers say that something is better, actually making it work in practice is a whole different ballgame. Uh, I'm going to be working on a new hero guide soon. Uh, I'm also doing some more item-based guides as well. But don't worry, I'll be back to normal business with my hero guide soon. It's just because I've been learning to do different things with Premiere Pro now. So mainly just trying to improve my overall production. And that can be difficult to translate into my hero guides. Anyway, thanks. See you soon.